Angel's Landing is one of those bucket list hikes that folks want to do. There's way too many people getting on this trail. My son was way too young to, to die. 13 people hiking the Angels Landing Trail in Zion National Park have fallen to their deaths just since 2000. That's according to a count compiled by Fox 13 News. Two hikers have died in just the last month. Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle reviewed dozens of National Park Service records and asked what can be done about the deadliest trail in Utah. The trail to Angel's Landing isn't that long or steep by hiking standards. The route most people take is a five mile round trip that elevates 1,500 feet. But as this graphic shows, much of the trail is on a cliff leading to the plateau that is the Angel's Landing. It's a trail 42 year old Corbin McMillan knew. He loved Zion. He'd done he, Angel's Landing um, twice before. McMillan moved from California to St. George, Utah three years ago to help with his father, who was on hospice care. Margie Barron is McMillan's mother. When home health aides would come over to help care for her husband, McMillan would use the opportunity to go hiking. I think he liked Angel's Landing because it was a, uh, gave him some adrenaline. This is a report we obtained from the Park Service through the Freedom of Information Act. It's about someone who fell to his death from Angel's Landing. The number of these reports is increasing. Ask Will Visitation to Zion National Park as the spring arrives and the pandemic ends. So, do hikers have to just keep falling from one of the most scenic trails in the world? We asked experts in outdoor recreation, what's going wrong? If it's not the most dangerous trail in America, it's one of the top five. Travis Heggie is an associate professor at Bowling Green State University who studies deaths in the national park system. He also used to work in risk management for the Park Service. We are winding, um, you're going back and forth, you, you know, you're zigzagging, you're climbing over some difficult rock. Angel's Landing is one of those bucket list hikes that folks want to do. Jeff Rose is a professor of outdoor recreation studies at the University of Utah. We showed Rose and Heggie the government reports and photos we obtained. The professors noticed some interesting trends. The trail's best known stretch is a narrow section where the Park Service has installed a chain handrail. But that's not where hikers are dying. Folks were falling either before the chain section or after the chain section. And, um, and 44% of the falls happened at the top. Rose said the data indicates hikers are getting too close to the edges. I'm a six foot person. I encourage uh, folks to kind of follow that rule. Don't get within six feet of, of the edge where you could fall and, and potentially lose life or limb. Peggy noticed many of the people who fell were hiking alone or like a 13 year old girl from Colorado City, Arizona, who died in 2018, got separated from their group. Don't leave children alone on that trail. Of the 13 people who have fallen to their deaths from Angel's Landing since 2000, most of them were men and most were visiting from other states or countries. Visitation at Zion National Park has doubled over the past 30 years, reaching almost four and a half million people in 2019. This most recent January and February set visitor records. Anyone that passes through Zion's gates are free to hike to Angel's Landing without any permit or special instruction. Rangers do not routinely staff the trail. One fatality report from 2017 noted that the trail was averaging 641 visitors per day. I would really recommend uh, to the National Park Service that they take this trail and they start using a permit system because there's way too many people getting on this trail and there's way too many inexperienced people getting on this trail. The National Park Service is liable for a lot of these incidents that happen on the park in light that they are aware of the risks. Why not close Angel's Landing Trail altogether? I have no problem with that. The Park Service warns on Zion's website and in signage at the trailhead that the hike's deep drops have killed people. Rose favors increasing the education for hikers. He's also open to limiting the number of people hiking the trail. He warns that could increase traffic elsewhere in Zion. What Rose doesn't want is more railing on the trail. He says that would detract from the natural setting. One of the reasons that we um that we appreciate these spaces is because they allow a chance for contemplative leisure. 
where we can think about bigger issues, bigger than ourselves or bigger than society and, and things like that. Barron would like rangers on the trail to enforce safety rules and keep an eye on hikers. She thinks her son had already reached Angel's Landing and was on the return on February 19th. She's been told by park staff and the sheriff's office that McMillan had left the trail, perhaps to look around. McMillan didn't take his coat with him. His mother wonders if he developed hypothermia and got disoriented. No one saw him fall. They called and said, we've located him and, and identified him. I started wailing and just said, oh, my boy, my boy. He fell 1,200 feet. After his memorial service, McMillan's family gathered for this photo underneath the spot on the trail where he fell. I didn't know until my son passed how many people uh, have died at Angel's Landing. My son was way too young to, to die. In Salt Lake City, I'm Nate Carlisle, Fox 13 News, Utah. Representatives of the National Park Service did not comment for this story. If you have questions about tonight's investigation, Nate will be logging on to the Fox 13 Facebook page live in just a few minutes to answer as many of your questions as possible. And if you have a story you would like the Fox 13 Investigates team to look into, send an email to iteam at fox13now.com or call the tip line. The number is 801-536-1314.